Hey, this is Kat. What we're looking at today is the underlying purpose of circuits. Because the thing is that we've been talking about drawing Boolean circuits and we've been talking about, you know, zeros and ones and all that kind of stuff. But where does it actually fit into the scheme of things? So let's start with the CPU. The things that we know about a CPU are generally that it works in cycles. And if we can imagine a cycle as a clock, then each cycle of the clock, so single revolution, basically it triggers something. So each CPU cycle something happens. You can also kind of imagine it that you see a marching band and every drum beat the people take a step. So beat, step, beat, step. And in the CPU each of these clock cycles it actually triggers an electrical impulse along a wire. So let's say that we had a basic little circuit here and each revolution of the clock cycle would shoot little signals down here and propagate through over there. Okay, so each circle of the clock pushes a signal through a circuit. So basically the faster the clock, the faster the information will propagate through your circles. But if you go too fast, then it can't each of the circles circuits can't actually deal with the information as it passes through and the information gets lost. Now also in the way we, that we design our circuits, we can't have too many gates or otherwise the information might not actually get through in a cycle. Okay, so poorly designed circuits with too many gates can cause problems, but also clock cycles that are too fast can also cause problems. Let's summarize some of the information that we've got so far. So the CPU works in cycles. Each cycle pushes information or electrical signals through the circuits that are on the circuit board. Circuits that are poorly designed and clock speeds that are too fast can cause problems. So what does that actually mean? What are circuits used for? Circuits are used for storing information and this can be instructions, for example telling the computer how to add two bits of information together, but it can also just be storing data like numbers or characters. And what we're going to have a look at now is something called a flip-flop. And you might be thinking, what on earth is a flip-flop? Now, a flip-flop is a very basic circuit and it is used to store one piece of information, so a one or a zero. Now, when we have systems that are using registers, registers are made up of a number of flip-flops. So, for example, if you had um, a program like Toy, which we'll look at later, so something that uses machine code, it might have something like a 16-bit register, and a 16-bit register is used to store a number. Now, if it's 16 bits, that means that you have 16 flip-flops in a row. So a flip-flop is a basic circuit that stores a number. Okay, so storing a zero or a one. To just conceptualize it, what happens is it takes an input. So let's say it's gonna store a one. It takes one as its input, and it has a circuit. I'm gonna draw it as a little box, or sorry, a little spiral. And what it does is for one clock cycle, it basically spins that number around and then outputs it as well. So let's now have a look at how it does that as an actual circuit. Okay, so this is actually called a DQ flip-flop. Don't ask me where that name comes from. I'm sure you could Google it. Okay, so what you've got is you've got the input is a D and that feeds in and it actually splits off straight away. Um, so one input goes into a NOR gate and the other one goes into a NOT which then also goes into a NOR gate. Okay, so I'll stop here for a moment. And what happens is, let's say that we are passing in a 1. So that goes into that NOR gate as a 1. Out of the NOT, it becomes a 0. So what is a NOR? So an OR is true when anything is true. So a NOR is going to be false when anything is true.
Okay, so this is going to help us trace it. So now this top NOR gate, it's got a 1 going into it. And so that's going to be false when anything is true. That means that that is going to actually output false. And where does that output go? It actually feeds in to the other NOR gate. So it feeds that a false as well. So going into that bottom NOR gate, you've got two falses. So an OR is false when anything is true. Nothing is true here, so it is going to actually output true. And where does that output go to? That output actually goes to two places. First of all, it splits to feed into the above NOR. So it would feed that one a true. So two trues are going to make a false because it's using a NOR gate. And the other output off that one, so the top NOR has only one output, the second NOR has two outputs, so one that's feeding through it and the other one that, that's cycling through the circle, and that is Q. So if we fed it in a 1, it goes into that top NOR and produces a false. It goes down and it matches up with a false and produces a true. So basically it just kind of cycles around, and this last one gets fed up there, but it also gets fed out there. So my input was a 1 and my output is a 1. So for one clock cycle, it actually takes that 1, feeds it through the circuit, and then pushes back out. Okay, so it's the clock that pushes it in and pushes it out. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And with the clock cycle, it is a little bit more complex than I've led you to believe. Uh, but you don't actually have to have an understanding of that at this stage. So if you can just visualize the clock as being circular motion, it pushes it in, and then once it's finished its loop, it pushes it back out. Okay, so this flip-flop is what's used to store one bit of information for one clock cycle. And just to go back to what I was saying uh, that I didn't know where the name came from, I don't know where the DQ comes from, but I do know where the flip-flop comes from. And the flip-flop comes from the fact that we're switching between zeros and ones a lot within the one circuit. So I was actually flipping the value backwards and forwards. Okay, so flip-flop, flipping zeros and ones. The DQ is specific to this design, but I don't know why it's called a DQ. Uh, but in the way that we use it, the D is the input and the Q is the output. Okay, so what you need to get out of this is that a flip-flop is used to store one bit of information for one clock cycle. That is the most depth I'm going to go into with flip-flops in computer science at college this year. You need to be able to trace, draw and trace a flip-flop to show that you understand how it stores that piece of information. So you may need to practice by drawing out your circuit and tracing it through with zeros and ones just to see that you can follow the logic there. Okay, good luck with all your Boolean.